Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem we're going to be doing today. We're going to be finding the derivative of the function f of x equals the square root of 9 minus x. And we're going to be doing it using the limit definition of what a derivative is. I've done a couple of videos like this in the last couple of weeks, and I want to, you know, continue on with that. Specifically, we're kind of going through the, the pattern of how it works when you're trying to find the derivative of a function using this method that has a square root in it. And this is exactly how, it's, this is kind of the trick that is described in The Calculus Lifesaver by Adrian Banner. It's a really good book, I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, really explains calculus in an intuitive, easy to understand way. So I'll put, there's a link in the description if you want to check that out, but I definitely recommend looking at that book. But let's go ahead and jump into this example. So in general, when you're trying to find the derivative of a function using this limit definition, the first thing you want to do is figure out what these pieces are. Um, obviously, f of x has been given to us, but we also need to figure out what f of x plus h is. So to figure out what f of x plus h is, all you really have to do is go to your function f, and since we have f of x here, now instead of plugging in just x, we're going to be plugging in x plus h. All we really have to do is go to this function and replace our x with x plus h. So if we do that, we're going to get the square root of 9 minus, and then you need to make sure that you're putting it in parentheses, x plus h. And it is really important, you know, sometimes the parentheses aren't going to matter. It really depends on what operations are being done to the x. But in this case, you can see we have 9 minus 9 minus our x. So as a result, when we replace the x plus h in there, we need to do 9 minus the entire x plus h. If we don't put these parentheses in here, we're only going to apply this subtraction to the x, and then we're going to have a plus h. But really what we need to do is distribute this negative sign to both the x and the h. So doing that is actually going to give us 9 minus x minus h. So now the square root of 9 minus x minus h is f of x plus h. So now if we plug this into our limit definition, and then if we plug this into our limit definition, we're going to end up with a limit which represents the derivative of f. So now based on the limit definition, we know that this limit is equivalent to the derivative of f of f with respect to x. So now all we really have to do is evaluate this limit. But, you know, usually when you look at a limit like this and you're trying to evaluate it, the easiest place to start would usually be to just try plugging in 0 for h, since it says we're taking the limit as h goes to 0. But if we do that here, we're going to put a 0 on our denominator and we're going to divide by 0, which is never okay to do. So as a result, we have to try and figure out some other way that we can manipulate this limit usually the pattern is going to be that we're going to try to get some h on the numerator that we can pull out and have h times a bunch of other stuff and then the h on the numerator and the h on the denominator will cancel and then we can just plug in zero for h so like i said as it was shown in the calculus lifesaver by adrian banner the method that we're going to use is just like the method that, that I use in the other videos I made about this. Um, there's a link in the description and up top here if you want to click on that. But basically all we have to do is take what we have here on our numerator. We have this square root minus this other square root. If we multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by exactly what we have on our numerator, but we change this minus sign to a plus sign, it's going to result in some pretty interesting things that make this fraction a lot easier to work with. So let's do that. So now when we do this, what we're essentially getting at here is using the difference of squares formula. The difference of squares basically says that having some term minus another term multiplied by that same first term plus that same second term is essentially going to leave us with our first term squared minus our second term squared. So if we get the square root of 9 minus x minus h squared, the squared and the square root are going to cancel out. So we're just going to be left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 
9 minus x minus h because our square root is going to get canceled out. And then same thing here, we're going to get minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. The squared and the square root are going to cancel out, so we're just going to have minus 9 minus x. So you can see we have these two terms, which we just basically have the two terms we started with and then squared them, and then we still have that minus sign between them. And then again, you want to make sure to put these in parentheses. And then on our denominator down here, we're going to have h times all this over here. So now what we really have to do is simplify our numerator. So basically deal with distributing this negative sign, combine our like terms, and just simplify that as much as possible. Our denominator there isn't really anything to do yet because remember our goal was to have h times a bunch of stuff on the top and the bottom so that our h's could cancel. So let's, we already have that on the bottom here. So all we really have to do is start with simplifying the numerator and see if we can pull an h out of it. So to simplify this, this first set of parentheses isn't really doing anything, so we're just going to get 9 minus x minus h. And then here we have to distribute our negative sign into the parentheses, so we're going to get minus 9. And then minus negative x is going to turn into a plus x. And then our denominator is going to stay the same, so we're just going to have h times all this. And now you can see on our numerator we have 9 and a minus 9, so those are going to cancel. And then we have a minus x and a plus x, so those are going to cancel. So now what we have is a negative h on our numerator. So now we end up with exactly what we were hoping we would. See, we have an h times a bunch of stuff down here, and then we have an h basically times negative 1 up here. These h's now can cancel, and we're just going to be left with a much simpler limit, which would be negative 1 over these square roots. So now that we've canceled out that h on the bottom, that was our, our original goal, remember, was to do that. Now that we've done that, let's think about what would happen if we just, at looking at this limit, if we just evaluated it by simply plugging in 0 for h. If we were to do that, there's really only one place where we have an h, right here. So if we plug in 0 for h, we're just going to get 9 minus x minus 0, which is just going to be the same as 9 minus x, right? Minus 0 doesn't really do anything. So now, having a, we basically just evaluated that limit by just plugging in 0 for h. Now we just have x's and other numbers, right? We got rid of our h. So that is what kind of tells us that our limit has been evaluated. Now we have something that just contains x's. There's no other variables in here which means that we have some function of x which should represent the derivative of our function f that we started with. So now all we really have to do is kind of simplify this. So doing that, you can see we'll get these two are the same. So the same thing plus the same thing is just going to be two of those things. So two times that square root. So we're just going to have equals negative one over two times the square root of nine minus x. So if we were to go back to our original function, which was the square root of 9 minus x, and take the derivative of that function using the chain rule, that would basically be a shortcut to do exactly what we did here. So this is our answer. If you found this video helpful and you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. It's a great way to help support my channel so I can keep making more videos like this. And I uh, hope to see you back here soon.